I've spent the last four years telling you that vintage watches are a minefield and we all know what happens to people when they cross minefields, don't we? So why have I just bought four of them? I don't know, it was Wednesday, I was bored. Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Yes, indeed, not one vintage watch, but four vintage watches at the same time. And to be honest, they all look quite similar to each other. I guess as watch collectors slash addicts, we all try and put certain boundaries around our collection slash addiction. And I put a bit of a price cap on myself a couple of years ago, which I'm delighted to say I haven't breached yet. And I also said no vintage watches. I bought a vintage Omega a few years ago. It broke shortly thereafter and it's still broken. And maybe that's what I needed to put me off. But I had a bit of an itch. I've always had a bit of an itch for a small vintage gold watch. I own one. This is my granddad's watch. But even if I do get it serviced because it needs a service, it'll never be a daily. It'll never really be something I feel comfortable wearing out and about an occasional piece at best. So I bought four at once and I didn't just buy them from a random, I bought them from my good friend Ashley over in Melbourne, who bought them from a Bulgarian on eBay. What could possibly go wrong, especially as he has never had these on the time grapher. So a bit of a quadruple unboxing today. I'm going to look at them on camera for the first time with all of you and I'm also going to put them all on a time grapher for the first time with all of you as well. Wish me luck. Let's get on with it. All right, so four vintage watches, a grand total of four vintage watches in the box. What are they and how much did they cost me? Well, believe it or not, inside this box we have one Laco, one Doxa, one Certina, and one Langle. I must admit I had never heard of Langle. Perhaps they didn't survive the quartz crisis. Grand total, now Ashley is a gem among men. He said he would sell me these at his cost price. His cost price was 625 Australian dollars. Now that comes in at about 475 US dollars or 350 great British pounds at the current exchange rate. So I'm not investing a massive amount of money. I thought I would ameliorate my risk somewhat by spreading it over four pieces and they're not hugely expensive pieces either. Let's get into the box. I'm excited. My goodness, Ashley, you have packed these well, haven't you? It's going to be a bit of a surprise as to which one is which. Therefore, why don't I start with that one? All right, then watch number one. And it is, in fact, the Langel. All right, so I know absolutely nothing about any of these watches. If any of you are vintage watch experts and have the first clue about what I'm actually unboxing here, then please leave me a comment. Let me know, I would love to hear from you. That doesn't quite look like a genuine case back, the original one anyway, but who cares? I think I actually paid a grand total of 127 Aussie dollars for this one. So like I said, not a huge amount of money. I couldn't find much about it. Apparently it has an unbreakable mainspring though, which can only be a good thing. Let's, oh, is it got a screw down? No, let's give it a wind. Ashley has not had any of these on the time grapher, but presumably if I give it a bit of a wind, it feels a bit stiff, that one. Scroll it forward to the watch reviewer's favorite 10 past 10. Looks like it hacks this movement, 21 joules as stated on the front. Yeah, a cute little thing. They're all gold. I think this one's got a bit of loom on the hands as well, as you can see there, some nice kind of, what are they, arrowhead indices and a dauphine handset. Can't quite get this one fired up though. Let's give it another couple of wines. Yep, let's keep giving it some wines. Well, this is a good start, is it not? Oh no, there we are. Thank goodness. It's alive. So that is the Langle on wrist then. I think that all of these watches have quite a few characteristics in common. They're all gonna be 34 or thereabouts and I think they're all 18 mil lug width as well. And that will be genuine acrylic domed crystal. I do have poly watch in the house. Although to be honest, if this the condition of this one is anything to go by, I'm not gonna use it. Lovely, lovely little watch. Ashley has definitely got an eye for vintage. We met up 
by the banks of the Yarra a couple of years ago and he brought a whole bunch of vintage watches with him and they were all gorgeous. He showed me about 10. I expressed an interest in picking up some vintage. He sent me photos of 10 of his and I picked four of my favourites, including this Langel. All well and good on wrist though. Let's get it on every vintage watch's worst nightmare, the Time Grapher. And yes, that is a fantastic result from watch number one, the Langel. The trace, rather than running horizontally across the time grapher screen, is shooting up vertically like a series of little fireworks there with an incredibly low amplitude. Hey, look at that beat error. There's got to be a positive in here somewhere. And plus 341 seconds per day, if I believe that. That's about six minutes. 18,000 beats per hour, vibrations per hour from this movement as well there. Hey, you don't get everything for your $127, including accuracy. All right, watch number two. Let's get the scissors onto this one. And it is, oh, it's the Certina with small second and a lovely brown lizard strap. And what a little cutie this is. It looks like it's in fantastic condition. Again, not sure whether that case back is original or not, but for the 155 Aussie dollars that Ashley paid for this one, I don't think it matters. 18 mil lugs, yeah, I'm gonna have to go on a bit of a strap buying spree, aren't I, to find some suitable 18 mil lug width strap for these. Small seconds on this one, very, very lovely. Let's fire it up and see if we get a bit of movement from the small second hand. Yes, indeed, this one is a little more promising perhaps than the Langel. Let's see what it looks like on my wrist. Yeah, I think this one looks gorgeous. I have got a seven inch wrist in case you have forgotten. I measured this one, it's coming in at just under 34 mil less than nine mil thick, including that bubble of acrylic crystal, but I suspect this one may even have 16 mil lugs. That's an 18, but it does look like it has been shoehorned in there. That is gorgeous. I have no problem with this size of watch, 34 mil, as I often say, you know, it's not a lady's watch, your dad. If not your dad, then certainly your granddad was wearing a 34, I know mine was, so it's certainly nothing other than a gentleman's watch, or a lady's watch, or a boy's watch, or anything you want it to be. This is a gorgeous watch, but what does the time grapher reckon? Hey, hey, the time grapher quite likes it. Much healthier amplitude, a smidge of beat error, but really who cares? None of these watches will be serviced at any point, I don't imagine. They're gonna be occasional wear watches for me, but ones that are relatively economical and I'm not terrified. They're not family heirlooms like my granddad's is. Minus 14 seconds per day. I've seen a lot of modern watches. I have reviewed a ton of NH35 powered watches, for example, that don't hit that benchmark. So I am pretty chuffed with this little Certina. Roll on watch number three. And I suspect watch number three is the Laco. Let's find out. Oh, and yes, I'm right, it is the Laco. That thing is stunning. My goodness, that thing is beautiful. Now, it is a bit of a lottery buying used vintage watches, but then again, if you get it right, I think it feels like you have won the lottery. Now, Ashley reckons he overpaid for this one. He paid 257, 257 Aussie dollars for it. I think that is quite reasonable. Now, automatic 1172, I believe that's the caliber. I did a little bit of research on this one from the photo that Ashley sent me, basically just Googling the caliber, and I found that tiny little inboard uh, date complication there on all of them. This is the only auto, the other three are manual wine 250. You can buy a new Laco for 250, so I don't think this one at 250 was a ripoff, Ashley, not at all. 16 mil lugs, again, that is not the original case back, but that is not a problem when the watch looks like that. What a little honey. Yeah, and because it's an auto, it's a bit thicker as well. This one has got just a bit more wrist presence than the other two, especially because of that dial. Beautiful, really, really nice. Modern watches, these Neo Retro watches, like my beloved Aura 65, try and replicate this look. They try and replicate the look of a kind of curved dial using their domed sapphire crystal. This one does it with a piece of domed acrylic. That is pretty lovely. Let's see what the time grapher thinks about this one though. Well, that is another result for the Laco, isn't it? Bulgarian eBayers buy with confidence. 
These are slightly unfair, putting them on the time grapher straight out the box. I have given each of the watches a good wind, but obviously a full wind, they'll be more accurate. And a bit of time to settle in, I'm sure. A bit of time to get the movements moving again, literally and figuratively, after a number of months, if not longer than that, in Ashley's watch box. Healthy amplitude, I can cope with the beat error. It's got the same 18,000 vibrations per hour beat rate, and hey, anything other than snow or fireworks is okay with me. Now that means this is the Doxa. This is actually the one that I was most excited about, so it's fitting that I left it to last. I believe it is just the watch head, no strap on it, which is why it's in this little small box. And it's the cheapest of them all, $86. I think it could be the sweetest of them all as well. Look at that, another little beauty. Now, again, I did a brief bit of research on this one. These are still available. I think you can pick these up for about 120 to 150 USD on eBay. That is lovely. Let's find out what strap width it is, find a strap for it, and zoom in. Well, the Doxa may be pretty, but I think it is also the dodgiest of the bunch. Very, very stiff to wind, so I'm not expecting great things on the time grapher. I managed to get the time set, but only kind of backwards. I think the crown is a little bit loose on the stem as well. I may have to uh, glue that with a little bit of thread lock, a little bit of Loctite there at some point. Actually, I now see why it wasn't supplied on a strap. Those lugs are so incredibly short. I took the 16 mil off the Laco, tried to fit it, but I'm gonna have to find a wafer thin strap to go along with this one. Assuming that it isn't a horror show on the time grapher that is. This is why you don't buy vintage watches. It doesn't know what's going on. There isn't actually much going on there at all. Look, three out of four is not bad. This was the cheapest and I'm not saying it's beyond repair, but it probably isn't going to get repaired. So yeah, it's probably beyond repair. Minefield, you know, I walked through the minefield, or actually walked through the minefield, or we both walked through the minefield and managed to get away, get three quarters of the way through the minefield without blowing up. Two out of the four actually look very good on the time grapher, and three out of the four look good on wrist. I reckon that is, yeah, overall, not bad. So big thank you to Ashley, my first foray into vintage watches, and it went pretty much how I was expecting it to. I guess with vintage, you gotta kiss a few frogs, and I reckon there's definitely one frog, that one, looks a bit green. Those two, I think, make up for it though. I guess you do get what you pay for, 250 odd. I think that is a bit of a bargain for that Laco. Definitely some new straps are the order of the day. I can see these two definitely becoming part of my ongoing collection. In fact, let me strap on the Laco for the final scene. Yes, that is one beautiful little watch. I'm gonna head downstairs, pour myself a large scotch and soda, light up a filterless cigarette, and recline on my chaise longue. So there you have it, well done for me making it all the way to the back end of the video. That's another four pieces to be added to my personal collection. It is expanding inexorably. Why don't you check out my State of the Collection videos from 2020 and from 2019. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon.